it will not be possible for the same thing to be and not to be. Not to be confused with Shakespeare's famous lines, to be or not to be, that is the question. Aristotle's statement here is known as the principle of identity. This principle tells us that each thing has all the same characteristics as itself, if treated at the same time and in the same fashion. Why is this principle so crucial to logic? To start, it allows us to determine when two terms refer to equivalent categories. By this, we mean when the reference of the terms, the objects slash categories which a term picks out, have all the same characteristics. In addition, the identity principle allows us to determine when two terms are not equivalent, i.e. when the reference of the terms do not all have the same characteristics. Knowing whether terms are equivalent or not is, in turn, crucial to building up a system of formal logic which will become clear should you choose to take a more advanced course in logic. Furthermore, the use of the same term in non-equivalent ways within a given argument is what leads to the fallacy of equivocation, discussed in a previous lesson. Thus, the principle of identity. Terms whose reference share the same fundamental characteristics are equivalent. Here are some examples. 1. Paris is equivalent to the capital of France. The referent of the term Paris has a fundamental set of characteristics that are the same as those of the referent of the phrase the capital of France. Applying the knowledge that two terms are equivalent when the referents have all the same characteristics, we can conclude that Paris and the capital of France must be equivalent. 2. Cat is not equivalent to dog. The fundamental characteristics of the category cat are different from those of the category dog. Cats meow, whereas dogs bark. Cats arch their backs, whereas dogs bare their teeth, etc. Applying the knowledge that two terms are not equivalent when the reference don't at all have the same characteristics, we can conclude that cat and dog must be non-equivalent terms. 3. 1 plus 1 equals 2. This example illustrates more precisely what is meant by equivalence. As you will have learned in your math classes, 1 added with itself equals 2. In any equation, we could substitute 2 with 1 plus 1 or vice versa. For example, 2 plus 2 equals 4, or 1 plus 1 plus 2 equals 4. Similarly, in any sentence in which Paris occurs, we can replace it with the capital of France by the principle of identity. In conclusion, in order for anything we say to have meaning, the identity of the thing that we're talking about has to remain constant. It is because of this that the identity principle can be seen as fundamental to logic. Understanding how this principle works and how it can be violated is thus crucial towards understanding what's at the heart of our communication. In this lesson, we learn to provide a working definition of the identity principle, explain how the identity principle can be used to determine when two terms are equivalent, and contextualize the fallacy of equivocation with respect to a breach of the identity principle.